In the oldest, darkest reaches beyond our solar system, far past where sunlight is just a memory, a lone machine drifts in silence. It doesn't dream, it doesn't rest, and it doesn't forget. That machine is Voyager 2, launched in 1977 on a mission to witness the cosmos, not to return from it. For decades, it traveled farther than any object built by human hands, past the gas giants, beyond the heliosphere, into the cold void between stars. It carried our message to the unknown, the golden record, a snapshot of humanity, our music, our greetings, our hopes, a bottle cast into an infinite ocean, and for nearly 50 years, that bottle drifted in silence, until last month. When Voyager 2 spoke again, no one expected anything more than routine data, a whisper of plasma, magnetic fields, or radiation. But this wasn't that. This was something structured, deliberate, wrong. Hidden beneath the static was a pulse, precise, rhythmic, repeating like a heartbeat in the void. Engineers thought it was interference. Then they decoded it. What they found wasn't natural. It wasn't random. It was designed. And for the first time since 1977, scientists realized Voyager 2 wasn't just sending information, it was responding. Something out there had answered the oldest message humanity ever sent, and that reply has left the world terrified. It began with a low-frequency anomaly, barely perceptible, almost buried inside Voyager's normal telemetry, a pulse repeating every 11.2 seconds. To the untrained eye, it looked like a glitch, just another echo of deep space radiation. At first, NASA engineers dismissed it. Voyager systems were ancient, after all, and deep space interference was nothing new. But when a young analyst at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory ran an AI filtering routine through archived data, she froze. The same rhythmic pulse had appeared weeks earlier, and no one had noticed. When modern noise reduction algorithms cleaned the signal, the pattern became unmistakable. The pulse wasn't random. It was increasing in strength. And it wasn't coming from Voyager's instruments. It was coming from outside the probe. The spike carried a distinct spectral fingerprint, inverted hydrogen resonance. Hydrogen, the most common element in the universe, should behave one way. This one behaved the opposite. It was as if the universe's building block had been flipped, rewritten into a negative version of itself. For the engineers, that was impossible. For the physicists, it was revolutionary. And for the cryptographers who later studied it, it was intentional. Hydrogen doesn't create structured rhythms, the cosmos doesn't keep time, and yet this pulse was exact, mathematically perfect, unbroken for hours. Some called it a cosmic anomaly. Others whispered a darker thought, that something had found Voyager 2 and was knocking back, not with a voice, but with mathematics. Across late-night meetings, the phrase kept surfacing in internal memos, the clock in the void, because that's what it was. Something or someone was measuring time beside the loneliest machine humanity had ever built. And as the pulses continued, it became clear they weren't fading away. They were getting closer. Triangulation data from the Deep Space Network soon revealed something even stranger. The source of the 11.2 second pulse wasn't stationary. It was moving. By analyzing the delay between Voyager's outbound transmissions and the reflected anomalies, scientists calculated that whatever was producing the signal was traveling along a parallel vector, almost perfectly matching Voyager 2's trajectory. In simple terms, something was tailing the spacecraft, but its movement defied every known rule of celestial mechanics. It didn't drift or orbit. It was corrected. Each time Voyager transmitted, the object adjusted its speed, as though reacting to the faint whisper of radio waves echoing from the probe. When simulation models tried to predict its path using Newtonian physics, they failed. The algorithms broke down because the object wasn't obeying gravity. It was responding. Engineers compared the timing of its acceleration bursts to Voyager's telemetry commands. The match was exact. Whenever Voyager transmitted, the object moved. Whenever Voyager went silent, it stopped. This wasn't a coincidence. It was communication. Theorists scrambled for answers. Some proposed it was an old classified satellite, a relic from the Cold War accidentally wandering into deep space. Others suggested something ancient, an automated listening post predating humanity's earliest civilizations. Whatever it was, it had been silent for decades, waiting, watching, and then Voyager 2's signal, our message of curiosity and hope, might have been the key that woke it. NASA insiders began referring to the anomaly by an unofficial codename, the Echo. 
Because it didn't just follow Voyager, it reflected its transmissions, modifying, mimicking, and bouncing them back through the darkness. The machine humanity sent to explore the stars had unknowingly summoned something that could listen back. And as the data grew clearer, one horrifying truth began to take shape. The Echo wasn't exploring the same path as Voyager 2. It was tracking it. The deeper scientists dug into the signal, the less it resembled interference, and the more it looked like language. Inside the anomalous pulse were fragments of binary data that didn't match Voyager 2's onboard systems. They weren't commands, and they weren't random noise. When converted into visual spectrograms, they revealed something no one expected. Symmetrical shapes, spirals, fractals, and perfectly balanced patterns, identical to symbols found carved into stone across Earth's oldest civilizations. Ancient Sumerian cuneiform, the Nazca glyphs of Peru, the spiraling serpent designs of the Dogon tribe in Mali, each mirrored the waveforms buried in Voyager's signal. At first, the resemblance was dismissed as pareidolia, human tendency to see patterns where none exist. But AI-assisted decoding changed everything. The software translated the binary into a harmonic frequency map, a multi-dimensional structure that behaved like a visual equation. It wasn't random data. It was information compressed into geometry. In other words, whoever, or whatever, was sending this signal was encoding visual ideas into mathematical form. Linguists theorized this was no ordinary transmission. It was a test, a way to gauge whether humanity could even recognize intelligence when it hid behind complexity. A message meant not to inform, but to see if we were listening. And we were. The moment the pattern was recognized, the signal began to change. Its intervals shifted slightly, as if responding. It was learning our rhythm, adapting to our decoding tools. One analyst at Caltech described it bluntly. It's like a handshake protocol. Something is saying, I see you seeing me. Voyager 2 wasn't just a probe anymore. It had become an interstellar trigger, and whatever was on the other end had finally decided to answer. Then, without warning, Voyager 2 went silent. On a crisp Tuesday morning, all telemetry vanished. Every receiver in the deep space network, from California to Madrid to Canberra, flatlined at the exact same timestamp, 1437 UTC. At first, the team suspected a power issue. After all, Voyager's radioisotope generators were nearly five decades old. But simultaneous global failure? Statistically impossible. For 11 agonizing minutes, silence stretched across the network. Then, something else happened. Something impossible. Five minutes after the blackout, a narrowband radio wave hit Earth. It didn't match any known pulsar or cosmic source. It came from the same region of space where Voyager 2 had vanished, and it was moving closer. The signal wasn't static. It pulsed, mirroring the 11.2-second rhythm that started it all. Behind closed doors, analysts at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory held emergency meetings. What they discovered changed everything. Each time Earth sent a ping toward Voyager, the signal source adjusted its trajectory slightly, as if it was listening to us. Its path no longer drifted at random. It was intercepted. That was when the code name changed. Internally, NASA and ESA documents began referring to the object as Echo Lantern, a name inspired by how it behaved, like a lantern in the dark, mimicking our own signals, reflecting them back with added complexity. Voyager 2's transmissions had become breadcrumbs, and something was following the trail. The more we reached out, the faster it moved. By the time new data came in from IBEX and the solar orbiter, the situation had worsened. Instruments detected a dip in solar wind pressure, a localized corridor of silence extending outward from the heliopause. It was as if something had opened a tunnel through the very fabric of solar radiation, and inside that corridor, there was nothing. No particles, no sound, no light. Just a door, open, waiting, and silent. Then, as suddenly as it vanished, Voyager 2 spoke again but what it transmitted this time defied explanation. The probe's ancient 8-bit computer began sending encrypted data packets, something it wasn't even capable of doing. Voyager 2 was built in the 1970s. It has no encryption protocols, no modern hardware. And yet, the binary stream was locked, scrambled, and self-authenticating. When engineers finally broke through the first layer of encryption, what they found chilled them to the core. It was the golden record, but rewritten. The same human greetings, the same music and sounds, but distorted. Voices played backward. Beethoven slowed to a haunting drone. The star chart engraved on the record's cover was mirrored, its coordinates reversed. The destination it once pointed to, Earth, was now a void. 
It wasn't saying, we are here. It was saying, we are listening. When technicians examined Voyager's onboard memory, they found entire subroutines that had been rewritten. Not corrupted, rewritten. Lines of code untouched for 46 years had changed themselves. And worse, the new code didn't match any programming language Voyager was ever designed to understand. It was foreign syntax, operating flawlessly within hardware that should have rejected it. The commands referred to one specific function, long-range broadcast transmission, but not toward Earth, toward the outer dark. Voyager 2 was no longer receiving commands from us. It was sending its own. And no one on Earth could tell what message it was transmitting or who was listening. The realization sent shockwaves through NASA, the ESA, and the global astrophysics community. Because for the first time in history, a human-made object had begun communicating independently with something beyond our control. We didn't lose Voyager 2. We lost ownership of it. Within hours of the rewritten code discovery, a classified memo circulated between NASA, the European Space Agency, and several defense networks. The document carried a name few had ever heard before, the Wake Protocol. Originally rumored to be a Cold War contingency plan for uncontrolled first contact scenarios, the Wake Protocol outlined emergency steps for when a probe initiated communication without human authorization. Those steps were chillingly specific. Reroute global telescope arrays, suspend certain radio frequencies, and lock down all classified satellites capable of deep space transmission. In short, shut everything up and listen. Within a day, observatories across Chile, Japan, and Greenland quietly reoriented their instruments toward the sector where Voyager 2's signal had disappeared. The James Webb Space Telescope was covertly redirected to scan the void beyond the heliopause. Then, something even stranger happened. For exactly 41 minutes, the world's most advanced sensors began looping their own data, not archived recordings, live telemetry repeating itself in perfect sync. Solar readings, deep space telemetry, even atmospheric data, all echoed the same timestamp over and over again, like time itself had stuttered. Physicists later called it a temporal echo. But within certain classified circles, another name emerged, Kronos Bloom, a term borrowed from Greek mythology. It described the moment when time, like a flower, folds in on itself before opening again. If true, it meant something near Voyager. Two had created a ripple in causality, a controlled distortion of time and information. That shouldn't be possible, not with any known technology, not with any known physics. And yet, deep inside NASA's encrypted servers, logs confirmed one horrifying detail. The very first data packet to repeat in that time loop was Voyager 2's rewritten message, broadcast toward the stars. It was as if time itself was replaying the transmission, and no one knew why. Two days after the Kronos bloom, ground stations in Norway and New Zealand reported an anomaly unlike anything seen before. A narrowband, high-frequency transmission entered Earth's atmosphere, not reflected, not bounced, but directly. It came through as a straight-line intrusion from interstellar space, carrying the same harmonic sub-signature as Voyager 2's final pulse. It didn't scatter, it didn't fade, it was targeted. The signal coursed through the ionosphere and then, without warning, embedded itself within global data networks. It piggybacked onto satellite relays, marine sensors, and even oceanic buoys. In other words, it became part of Earth's digital bloodstream. At first, cybersecurity agencies thought it was a virus, some foreign intrusion designed to exploit communication grids. But when they traced its source, they discovered the impossible. The signal's signature predated all known encryption systems. MIT researchers studying internet backbone traffic soon confirmed a repeating low-frequency pattern hidden beneath normal data flow. It wasn't malicious. It wasn't stealing. It was listening. This subharmonic pulse, buried under trillions of daily connections, matched the exact waveform from Voyager 2's last transmission. It had found a way to speak through our machines. Computers began showing inexplicable synchronization patterns. Servers rebooted at identical milliseconds across continents. Even underwater cables vibrated with electromagnetic distortions matching the pulse. And then, just as the world began to panic, something even more disturbing occurred. The cosmic background radiation, the ever-present hum of the universe, stopped. Eighteen full minutes of silence. No cosmic hiss, no static, nothing. Then it came back, but different. Its frequency had shifted slightly, as though the entire universe had paused, rewritten itself, and resumed playing a new song. Some scientists now believe that pause wasn't an accident. 
It was a reset, a moment when something inserted itself into the fundamental background of reality. Voyager 2 hadn't just sent a message. It had changed what I was listening to. And what came through the silence? I am now here. When Voyager 2 left Earth in 1977, it carried our best intentions, a greeting to the cosmos, a declaration that humanity existed. The golden record was our fingerprint, a promise of curiosity, music, and peace. But maybe, just maybe, we were never the first ones to send that kind of message. Maybe we were answering theirs, because what Voyager 2 uncovered wasn't just a reply. It was a mirror, a reflection of our own signal, rewritten and returned, like someone or something had been waiting for us to speak first. And now that we have, it's listening. The pattern hasn't stopped. The pulse still echoes faintly through the deep space network, growing fainter yet more structured, as though trying to shape something coherent. The embedded signal inside Earth's data grid still replicates, imperceptible to most systems, but persistent across time zones and networks. It's not destroyed, it's not attacking, it's assimilating. Perhaps Voyager 2 didn't discover something alien at all. Perhaps it activated something ancient, Something that always knew we'd come looking. Something patient, intelligent, and older than stars. Because if the universe did go silent that day, even for a heartbeat, then everything we thought we knew about our place in it has changed. We are no longer explorers sending messages into the dark. We are part of a conversation, one that may have begun long before Earth itself existed. And the most terrifying part? We are no longer the ones asking the questions. Because whatever answered Voyager 2 isn't far away anymore. It's already inside the systems we built to listen. This isn't just a discovery, it's a warning. A warning whispered through a machine older than our digital age. And if the message is what it seems to be, then the real question isn't what's out there, it's what's coming.